I'm a living example of you can get punched in the face and get back up because I'm the modern day Aztec warrior. <laughs> I'm escaping the brain, go straight for the cake. I'ma take for the pain, I'm taking a break. I'm made for the race, I pray for the day. I wake with a bake in the greatest state. Hey, Are you living in a box? I'm bigger than a box. I'm spitting to supply my bread. My vision on the top is living like a boss when I kick it in a nice white jet. I'm quicker with the bars, I'm wishing with a one, yeah, I'm dipping to the bar, I guess. I'm switching like a brown when I spit it in song. My mission is to try my best. Taking a stab, but I came with a bad, I'll be chasing to grab my goals. If you ain't in the back and you ain't with the facts, don't be faking and act like bros. <laughs> Welcome back to MMA Underground, your favorite part of Tuesday. I want half the dynamic duo killing it, known as Buddy V, with the one and only. Sam K. And man, we got a phenomenal guest in the building. All the way from Street Beef's Dirty South, we have Ooh. the one, the only, Dennis the Menace. Yeah. How you feeling, bro? Man, I'm feeling good. I'm just thankful to be on here and like finally, you know, talk with you guys and stuff. You know, it's great. Thank you. Glad That's to have awesome. you, bro. And especially because we talk about the Dirty South a lot, too. We've said, you know, we want to get some Dirty South fighters on. We love watching the fights, and I'm just like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got some bangers for sure. You know, it's a little more low-key, but that's what makes it better, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. And uh, where are you from so so the people can know exactly? Yeah, man. So, like, uh, me and my pops, we were actually the only two in our family, like, born in Fort Worth, Texas. So, I grew up here a little bit, and then I graduated high school from Florida, and then I moved back here about four years ago. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Two dirty gotcha. south, man. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I, uh, you know, it's always fun. I was rewatching some of your fights, and um, let me just say, there was one I missed. And when I rewatched it, I had a, a true, it's like a connection feeling because in one of my fights, I ended up had uh, broke my bone and I had a screw put through it. And I looked Ooh, at the title yeah. and if I'm not mistaken, you broke your bone in the fight? Yeah, yeah. I had a pretty gnarly injury and that one was posted on the OG yard. So that one's on there for everyone to see. I have an MMA and a kickboxing one. And the one where I had an injury, it was with Skinner and it was a kickboxing match. There was like, the rules were kind of up in the air as far as if, if it was kickboxing or Muay Thai. You know, there's a few different rules there. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, yeah. So I had a uh, – it's similar to, like, a boxer's fracture. Like, it was just, like, a hairline fracture on my shin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what up? What, uh, what were the names of those uh, two fights so uh, the people can go look those up? Ooh, that's a good one. So I think the mixed martial arts one, I'm wearing white shorts. That one's my fight name, Dennis the Menace. I think his was like unknown or something like that. I'm not sure what the name of them are. Um, the kickboxing one, I think it, I think that the name of it is like something different, like ends with like something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the exact names for them. The MMA one, it was like a uh, like a Mexican dude, kind of, right? Yeah. I think his name was like Dustin or something. I was because I was gonna ask you about that fight because um, yeah. that's, uh, a, that's one of my favorite he, ones, bro. Yeah. That was a good back and forth, and I mean, he had you in a a choke for a while, and you were fighting through where you were powering, and um, I was gonna yeah. ask, do you feel like he kind of wasted some energy? uh trying to hold on to that choke for so so long yeah bro definitely thankfully he wasn't moving around to other positions or trying to do something else so bro we were just talking about it uh you were talking about the heat bro that day i was like one of the very last fighters or fights in general like they have a list they go down so i was like 
and we had a lot that day. I want to say it was maybe I was the 40th something fight. So it was like a few hours I was just cooking out in the Texas heat, bro. And that day, like, you would see people after they got done fighting, they were just being carried and, like, dragged over to, like, these showers and stuff, bro. It was like a movie that day, bro. I remember before I got into the cage, I tried to stand up. And my vision, like, for the first time in my life just got all blurry. And I got, like, a like tunnel vision because of how hot it was. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I felt like I was about to pass out. <laughs> Well, I, I could imagine. Like, yeah. yeah, it was pretty intense. That was I wanted to. Uh, oh, I, I just wanted to bring up right here what uh, Jay put up. Those fights were against uh, Dustin, and the other one was against Skinner. So Dennis the Menace versus Dustin, and Dennis the Menace versus Skinner. You guys should go check those out. Yeah, yeah, definitely look them up. What uh? Say for that fight, he revs it up. So as you watch. You're going to go like this. Oh, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah, bro. Um, There was two, like, little YouTube channels that were reacting to it. And they had, like, a funny reaction. You know, they were low-key making fun of me because, like, I barked. You know, I I'd just be doing stuff in the middle of the fights, bro. Just, like, showing a little bit of my personality. Because, like, I mean, and I'm talking about the Skinner one right now. He was low-key, like, doing some things during that fight that was a little bit questionable. but. I understand we're in a, you know, such we're, in as, age, we're fighting for free. Questionable, so, such as what? Oh, man, just like it was kickboxing and I was just kind of getting thrown around a lot. It was mm -hmm. less like sweeps. I could understand the sweep here or there, but he was low key. Like I got a screenshot and he was like actually taking me down. And then there was, was a moment where I like held his head right here. <laughs> just, uh, you know, so I mean, it, it was a good fight back and forth. Mm. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, man, growing up in Texas, um, how did you get your start in the fight world? Like, what drew you into uh, martial arts and training and whatnot? Yeah, man. Whenever I was here in Texas, I was growing up watching, like, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Like, I'm a nerd, bro. I'll be watching cartoons and, like, anime and some stuff. So I was, like, doing some karate, and, like, that's how I got my start. And then... um and then whenever I was in Florida, I would just start bringing my gloves to school and I would just be like sparring people in the locker rooms and stuff, just like boxing. <laughs> bro, I got tons of like videos and stuff doing that, bro. Like, and being from Florida and stuff like Jorge Masvidal and like, that's how I like really got into it. Like that kind of stuff, you know? So lots of karate and boxing, lots of striking. Yeah, I love it, man. I can remember walking in the locker room like, all right, guys, line up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was fun, bro. It was fun. I can definitely send you all some videos and stuff like that. Like, I just posted one because, uh, like, sometimes I'll be sending some K. Like, I'm still, like, boxing a little bit, but I'm trying to focus on MMA. Like, that's my passion. That's my love. So, I just had a boxing match. And, yeah, I was posting some, some old clips of me from back then <laughs> in the locker rooms, bro. <laughs> But I know they actually um, they had like a wrestling class, too. So that's what I've been focusing on, too, recently. Some grappling. Got to respect it. Yeah. <laughs> like in that fight with Dustin, like with the heat and him trying to choke me out the whole time. I was lucky I had the experience from my first fight, like surviving the whole first round, you know, trying to get through a submission. And, man, I, I was very thankful. I was thinking about that the whole time, like. You know, this could really go either way if I let it. <laughs> yeah. No, it was that fight was awesome. I liked watching. Both your fights are amazing. But thank you, bro. You're talking about these two fights. And as I was looking up a few things, you got to fight on your birthday at the Street Beefs Anarchy one, right? Yeah, bro. Was that your yeah. First ever? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Was that your first Street Beast fight ever? Or that was my first Street Beast fight, bro, on my birthday. Nice. What'd you think about yeah. it? How old did you turn? Because you look real young. Yeah, bro. I'm 22 right now, and that was whenever oh. I turned 20. Dang. Hell yeah. I saw that. I was like, what? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's how I know I was born for this, man. 
<laughs> so you, you've been with the Dirty South since uh, for a while now. Um, can yeah. you talk about how you found out about the Dirty South, how you joined, how that all happened? Yeah, bro. So I was, um, you know, I was talking with the West Coast branch a little bit whenever I first moved here before the Texas branch was made. And I was trying to go out there, but, you know, the travel and like I had just graduated, so I didn't really have that much money. And I'm like in a different state and now I'm kind of by here, uh, here in Texas by myself. So I was trying to go out there and then I, man, what was it, bro? I think it might've been like Facebook. I was on Facebook and so I have a hey, team text. here. Yeah. And, um, the guy who I started the team with, Kevin, he reached out to me and he started telling me about um, about a Texas branch possibly getting made soon. And then I think the first event was at a gym, but it was like outside. And then uh, Lincoln, the guy who was uh, setting up the event at that time, I guess you could say the promoter, um, he then reached out to me. And so we kind of just kicked it off from there. Yeah, nice. man. Yeah. It's a badass story. I like that. That's like the whole master. I was like, what happened? Oh, I was in the gym. So and so came up to me, got a call later. Like, can you fight? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. It was pretty sweet. You know, I just like, I hopped in that, uh, that street piece, um, like little Facebook page. I got in there and then some people were talking about setting up a Texas branch, bro. And then finally it got made so yeah and i know that uh you know funds you know are one of the biggest things for a lot of fighters because obviously street beast we do this all for free and stuff and uh yeah um uh, oh well oh let's uh answer ryan's question i guess real quick sorry <laughs> oh yeah my weight so i actually i've never walked around up to 160 before bro i fight really natural so the first fight i did cut down to like 137 but now as i'm growing maturing I'm mainly just like 145 right now, so featherweight. Nice. Yeah. And, I'll just and you say, feel you good at that weight? Much... Oh my, yeah, yeah. I feel great at featherweight, bro. I think once I go professional, I might drop down to bantamweight, just because I'll have that one night to like you know boost back up. So I want to see what it would be like <laughs> versus who Gash. <laughs> you know who Gash is. Man, I've definitely heard of that name. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a running joke uh that Ryan has. Uh Gash is a, a scrap a old a old school scrapyard fighter. Yeah, um, but yeah, she doesn't kickbox anymore. <laughs> oh she, yeah. Oh yeah, I know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. That may uh, <laughs> that may not go <laughs> my way. <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm ducking her so sh you can have her yeah <laughs> facts yeah we'll leave it that one to ryan bro <laughs> hands off yep <laughs> so that's perfect because she's from the scrap yard i was just about to ask if you ever got the funds right would you go visit another yard or try to visit all of them or yeah man yeah man i would love to like visit all the other branches like i definitely feel like i should check out the west coast at least once the scrapyard, bro. I love, uh, I love y'all's cage. I love, I love everything there. How it has like the edits and stuff for everyone. Like, bro, that yeah. stuff looks thick. And um, man, definitely the OG yard too. Like, there's some people up there, you know, that <laughs> would be fun. Fun to mix it up with. Who we thinking? Because you got some some people in mind. Yeah, I saw yeah. that smile. There's <laughs> definitely. <people. laughs> yeah, I definitely do, man. The first name that comes to mind, bro, like after my fight with Dustin, I sort of messed up like my call out because I was just so tired and it was so hot. I was like, man, I can't even remember the name. I'm so happy they cut it out. <laughs> but, um, bro, definitely sensation, bro. Like, I know he's professional, but yeah, yeah, I feel like that'd be a good one. That's just the first name that comes to mind, though, for the OG yard. That'd be a fire. Yeah. See, I feel like he got heavier, but I would have liked to see you uh, fight Beach. But I think he goes—he's up at like one sixty something now. 
Yeah, that's the thing, bro. I don't know how these guys do it, if they actually cut down or not. Some people, they just walk in there. I'm like, man, you guys are brave. <laughs> What's your thoughts on uh, weight cutting and, and fighting uh, at, at walk weight? What are your thoughts? I think that's probably the healthiest you, you could really do. Um, just for the fact, like, at the end of it, we're not getting paid. You know, it's for the entertainment and for the love, so... Definitely, like, oh, yeah, what's up, Cash? Yeah, that's my little bro. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Yeah, uh, So you, you said you just had a boxing match. Was that at Street Beast or was that somewhere else? Yeah, that YouTube channel that my first fight is on, it was for that promotion. Nice. I'm going to yeah, check man. that out. Yeah, because let, let the people know what it is so they can go check it out. Yeah, bro. It's uh, Dennis the Menace, my fight name, versus Bruce Guapo. That was the night before Easter. Mm. So, yeah, that was March 30th. Yeah, and that's on The Businessman's page. It's all one word, The Businessman. Shout out to him. He's got a cool intro. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's legit, bro. Yeah, he really is. And, like, um, that's the thing, like, getting active and stuff like that uh trying to stay active like i'm trying to fight four times this year so i'm already two up and then hopefully may 18th there was someone um there's someone who called me out and that would be my first rematch and then uh and then may 18th i got someone who i'm definitely eyeing that i think would be like I think it'd be a pretty fun fight, bro. And it's the first time they it's a uh, Gym Wars. That's the day or that's the name Ooh. of it, May 18th, Gym Wars. And it's the first time I'm gonna be in the octagon, like uh with a canvas and everything. So woo, yeah, bro. I'm I'm excited, bro. <laughs> I'm excited, man. <laughs> oh man, how many people think you're gonna be there? What? Yeah, man, I'm trying to invite everybody, bro. I'm like, if you guys don't go to one, biggest strength. Dang. Biggest That's a good question. Strength. That is a good question. Um, Man, my biggest strength for me, I would say adaptability, man. Mm. I can adapt, like, I can adapt in there on a moment's notice. Just kind of like, kind of feel it out um you know you hear the mike tyson quote all the time bro everyone has a game plan so they get punched in the face so i've kind of just taken that and ran with it like i just like to to kind of just throw things out there bro and hope they work <laughs> and then i think my biggest weakness is uh you know it's like a big part of it is like the mental part and just like actually like wanting to get in there and just I guess wanting to win, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't even some people are defeated. Yeah. I was going to ask you. Yeah. So you said that you're eventually planning on going pro. And you guys think you plan on going pro in MMA. Would you pr prefer to stay in that? Would you maybe branch out to try to do like some bare knuckle MMA professionally or even BKFC yeah. or anything else or? Bro, buddy, like, I, cause you're you're going into a bare knuckle boxing, right? Yeah, I went to the tryouts. It's officially been one week. We're gonna start <laughs> yeah, waiting by our bro. phones. Yeah, I think that's so sick, man. I love bare knuckle boxing. Like, I'm definitely wanting to do some bare knuckle boxing. Maybe after my MMA career or something like that. I like. I want to get into that, bro. I love bare knuckle boxing. It's sweet. It is so sweet. And there's tons of MMA guys that go there too. Yeah. Yeah, like I wanted to ask things. you about that. I've seen like people's videos of uh, like the the workouts and the tryout kind of things. Like, what what, what was that like for you? Uh, luckily, the tryouts were with gloves, no. <laughs> but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. They definitely you could see where some people were trying to come out just to kind of try to come out. Um, their whole first hour was a full like regular boxing workout. They're making sure who had cardio, who had whatnot, and um, yeah, you could start to see the people kind of separate. And then after that, with the bag work, it was fun. But the sparring, oh man, that was a lot of fun. They're like, hey, we want to see light sparring. Yeah, some light sparring. <laughs> okay, there was a couple times I got dung once or twice. It was really fun. Um. There was once or twice, though, when people had to get kind of pulled back because there was one guy 
who I guess he is trying to be a professional boxer, and this kid was good. And he was stepping up with the people bigger than him, but he definitely was not holding back. Like, he was wailing on people. I think he got, like, three people pulled out the ring, and then, uh, yeah, Chris Lytle was like, yo, you know, these are tryouts. <laughs> so yeah, that was, uh, that was a crazy, amazing experience. And, yeah, I hope I get that phone call, though. Man, yeah, I hope you do too, bro. Yeah, bare knuckle boxing is so sick, and you have to be a different animal entirely, I feel like, to get in there. Like the street beast, like dark room stuff that they have going on with the hand wraps. Like, I'm, I don't know, man. I'm looking at that too. Like, that's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a quick taste of what what it is. You know, mm -hmm. it's another game in itself for sure. Yeah, I wanted hey, to ask you. Um, oh, go ahead, buddy. I was just gonna say, I was the one cool part too. Is he even uh, showed us with the boxing? He's like, obviously you don't have gloves, so when you spar, I want you to grab the back of people's head. He's like, not here. You pull it here, this, because right here you have the neck. And he showed us right where to pull. He's like, dirty boxing. It's legal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I like about bare knuckle boxing too. The little like clinches and the different shots you can throw, bro. It's like it's a different kind of different than boxing. I I honestly like to watch bare knuckle boxing. I think I'd rather prefer to you know try and create a path for myself in there rather than like average or i'd say like normal boxing you know not average but right yeah for sure i wanted to ask you man um what what were or who were some of your influences uh coming up in the fight world yeah some of my influences the first guy who got me into yeah apex hundred yeah that's what he just asked too the first guy who brought me into it was definitely Conor McGregor just because of like how old I am. That's whenever he started popping off. So that was just bound to happen. And then John Jones, bro. Like I, I take a lot of, uh, I take a lot from him. I love that guy. And then man, like oh. current or maybe like OG kind of fighter, like someone who's been there or does it matter? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oof, anyone. Man, that's a good one, bro. Dang. I'm trying to think of a good all-around guy, man. I definitely say, uh, I definitely say I'll go Jorge Masvidal again, bro. Just just how he's got how he got started. I think that's similar to a lot of guys who are fighting here, like all of us included, you know, no matter yeah. where you're from, like just how we're getting started, how we're kind of getting our name out there. It's like very similar to that, man. So it's very inspiring. When's he fighting Nate Diaz? Do you know? And he's like either the 27th or the 1st, something like that, maybe in June, right? June 1st? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Cause he has game bread FC and that's bare knuckle MMA. So that's yeah. like entirely different in itself. <laughs> yeah, that's the most brutal you can get right there. Is he fighting him in that? He's actually boxing Nate Diaz. Oh, they're just boxing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What to see? I'm like, dude. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's as real yeah. as it gets. <laughs> um, yeah. I was going to ask you both. Cause I know sometimes with the game, you know, people talk, uh, talk some shit. And I, it's been a while since you brought it up, but I was kind of going to ask your opinion about is there a line to cross when talking shit to help promote a fight? Because I know that uh, when Ryan Garcia fought Geronte Davis, there was a lot of ticket sales. And I know when he's fighting Devin Haney uh, and there's not as, the sales I know aren't as great. And he, I feel like he's trying to promote himself more or something. And uh, he started talking about his mama and he did. I was like, I was like, okay, you lost my respect there. Even Austin De La Hoya, you could see his face like, what the fuck? Like, right. Man, of all the things to say, come on, somebody's mama. And I don't know. I just wanted to see what you guys thought about that because I just saw that today and I was like. Yeah. You can go ahead, uh, Dennis. Ooh, definitely. I mean, mama is like the first known line that you cannot cross, bro. Like, <laughs> Like, I, I know I'm from Texas and we have a different Southern mentality kind of thing, I guess. But just, you know, like borderline respect. But, um, man, that's definitely not something that, that you go for. Yeah, I think there's a line to cross, bro. Like, I think uh, Ryan Garcia, how Devin Haney was kind of trying to spin his thing about the whole Ramadan thing and Christmas thing. Like, 
I don't know. I think he was playing a little bit into that part, but definitely religion, someone's religion, someone's mom, family. Those are definitely, you know, basic lines that you just want to want to cross. Their wife, yeah. that's a no go. <laughs> People get killed for that shit. Don't yeah, <laughs> wife, husband, Real man, shit. it don't matter, bro. <laughs> Real yeah. shit. I think for me, man, uh, it's not you know, it's not something I uh, you know do or dive into. Uh, you know, I rather let the skills speak for themselves. Um, but I get it with other fighters. You know what I mean? Some fighters need to do that. Um. Some fighters are doing it simply to weaken their opponent, you know, because they know it, it they can and it will, you know what I mean? So sometimes it's promotion, sometimes it's psychological warfare, you know, but either or um, you just kind of got to recognize it and then you got to know who you are as a fighter. You know, if that's something that works for you, you know, like in uh, in, you know, it's not fighting, but in the. Uh, uh, wrestling entertainment world, <clears throat> there's a heel for a reason, you know, there's a bad guy for a reason, you know, and um, most people understand the play, the show, you know. Yeah, I'm definitely not opposed to it. I Like you said, bro, it makes, makes a better show. Like, that was one thing, my first beef match, the, the last uh, Street Beast event we had, Dirty South event in January, um like that was um, as far as like a real beef like it was definitely real but um i don't know bro i don't really go too deep into the comments and stuff but i just saw like a few comments and bro i, I wanted to say on there like um ghost hands the dude that's his fight name shamar like i seen his comment he was like you know, anyone who thought I threatened to shoot Dennis the Menace, you know, whatever, sorely mistaken. But like, I don't know, bro. Screenshots don't lie. <laughs> so right. you just got to be careful, bro. Got to be real careful what you be saying and telling people, man. Yeah. I, I believe in karma for that, too. You know, I think that kind of goes into like the lines and stuff. You got to be careful crossing, you know. Just got to be aware, bro. But like some K, he said it best. Like, yeah, you got to be pretty well like centered as a fighter too if you don't uh if you don't mind talking about it what was that uh beef fight about yeah man there's like this group chat that we have and so people they like put some of their videos out there maybe training that kind of thing just like a facebook community would you know that you join in and um I don't even think I really said anything like opinionated. I just kind of like threw something out there, bro. And he got really upset. That was after my fight against Skinner. So I was taking one event off just to make sure I was healthy. I wasn't going to fight. And then uh, he ended up fighting. And then he said I was ducking him. He kind of drug it out and stuff. And like, um, basically how it led up to the whole like shooting thing happened. I I don't, I wasn't obviously scared. I still showed up to the event. I knew we were going to fight. I didn't think it was anything like hood, like we may or may not be familiar with, or, you know, like that kind of gun violence stuff. I didn't think anything like that, but you know, I told him, I was like, you know, I was kind of trying to put on a show and stuff, you know, get everyone hyped for the events. So I was like, man, if you show up late, you know, we may not wait till we get into the cage. And then he didn't like that. He was like, hey, man, if you touch me, you know. And then he said what he said. And I was like, okay, buddy, we'll see. But <laughs> Did you win that fight? Oh. Yeah, I mean, win I or lose, bro. You fight. know, I'm trying to get some views on my fight, too. So go check it out. You know, it's a B fight. Oh, hey, like yeah. Wait. For a B fight. <laughs> Has the fight been dropped yet? Do what? That fight dropped? Yeah. Yeah, it's on the Dirty South channel. Yeah. Dirty South channel. I'm Great to, answer. I'm to go <laughs> Dirty South only has a few events every every few months. So their their fights are are out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna check it out there. 
Yeah, they've yeah, been the out. The only one that didn't happen was, um, or the the only fights where some didn't get posted was from the July event because it was so hot and it affected like their cameras and stuff from the mm -hmm. heat. Like, bro, it was insane. It was over a hundred degrees easily. Yeah, jeez, that's happened to us before uh, in the West Coast a few times, bro. Yeah, camera, so got, uh, yeah. phone blowing out and shit. Yeah, so okay, that's what I wanted to ask you too, because like it, even in the little clip that it just showed, so you mostly do like striking, like kickboxing, or do you like MMA too? Like, uh, I, I you know, a lot of people think I'm a boxer and label me a boxer because that's mostly what I compete in. Um, but you know, I, I would say I'm a mixed martial artist, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, I do a mix of things, um, I'm more so a striker, uh, but uh. You know, I, I come from the Jeet Kune Do philosophy, so I'm trying to I'm trying to use anything that works for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to use anything yeah. that that is uh, applicable and uh, in a real life street setting. You know what I mean? So um, I've mostly done boxing, but I did a I did one Muay Thai last year. And, um, you know, yeah, that's that's what it is. Yeah, bro, that's sick. Yeah. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah. And I like how you recognize, bro, there's a difference between boxing and striking. You know, that's one thing I feel like some people kind of get a little confused. Like, even though we have boxing gloves on, it's it's still different. Mm -hmm. but, you know, whatever. But, man, that's dope. And I like how you said that, too, using what you know or using your environment to your advantage for you. Like, yeah, that's a martial yeah. artist, bro. That's a mentality. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because, you know, the idea is to be able to do this in in my mid 80s. You know what I mean? And really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not compete, Man. but but train and get better. You know, like you, the, the idea is to continuously progress because, you know, re regardless to whatever reward or trophy you're going for outside of the the trophies. Right. What are you doing this for? You know what I mean? Like. Are you doing this to be this exact same person you were at 22 when you're 82? You know what I mean? Like, no, you should be like, you should be able to go back in time and train that 22 year old that you were, you know what I mean? So yeah, bro. Let's go. Let's go. So I'm okay hitting with the knowledge too. I swear. You get that over the wind yeah. down. <laughs> a, a little bit, a little bit. My uh, my instructor, my Jeet Kune Do instructor, definitely, he'll he'll kill a Wing Chun dummy. Um, me, um, I can make it look like I'm doing something on the Wing Chun dummy. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm more of a hands-on trapper. Yeah, it's too yeah, smooth with it. Man, I'm telling you, the videos sometimes don't do people justice. I want to watch you fight in person one time, Dennis to Menace. Because I watched Song K fight, but when I saw him fight in person at the uh, Super Bowl event, it was so much smoother. The video didn't capture it. I was like, man, and you're already fast. I was like, um, I like the way you fight. I like the, uh, the how your explosiveness comes out as well. And I was actually going to ask kind of like some of your training regimens. So like, what do you prefer when you train for your fight? Do you do anything different? Yeah, man, I appreciate you. I, I definitely like from the first time that I showed up to the events, bro, it is way different watching it in person. And that's why I try and tell people like, bro, it's free fights for the people who aren't fighting. You get a list of fighters who you're just watching for free. And it's like one of the best things you could, I think anyone could ever experience. It's like way different than, I really don't even consider this a sport, bro. Like, like some K was kind of getting at is like, it's a lifestyle. And it's just one of those things where there's nothing else like it, bro. Um, I'm I'm sorry, buddy. My bad. What was your question, bro? I just had that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Hey, yeah, that's what bad. we're here yeah. for. I was gonna say, uh, what was some of your training? Like, what do you enjoy about training? Do you have anything oh, favorite? Yeah. And when you're preparing for a fight, do you switch it up versus like your normal everyday training? Oh yeah, yeah. There's definitely some things like getting more experience and fighting more. I'm kind of I'm going through that process right now like different things and I need to be doing fight week versus things that I can kind of cut back on because 
like some of these guys are doing, they're just walking in there at their normal weight. And I like to just kind of cut weight. I feel a little bit healthier, kind of gives me practice for whenever I am a professional. So I'm doing it a little bit differently. Uh, yeah, bro. Like, I guess I'm definitely hitting a bag the whole time. You know, I'm trying to get that, trying to get that in. I'm not very huge on sparring anymore. I like to do more of the flow kind of flowy kind of stuff wrestling and and grappling bro all of that is like live <laughs> Vince me bone one of those bro that's funny yeah tony ferguson a g um rolling and wrestling like i'm trying to do that live a lot just trying to get the experience and trying to get that stuff going um i think i brought him up earlier but kevin so him and i the guy who uh who we kind of started a team for out here in texas he was a wrestler and I was more of a striker. So him and I, we kind of go off each other and train and yeah, we just kind of get each other ready. His fight name kind of changes. Most people know him as Kevin. So yeah, he oh, fought yeah. Thunder Dragon. For the Dirty South? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, go check that out. And you, before one of your fights, you shouted out your, what's your fight team name? House of Hands, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's a dope name yeah appreciate it bro yeah we got boxers and mma fighters me and kev we're, we're really the only mma fighters in on the team that's you know but um yeah bro that's one thing about texas man like boxing is just too easy like you guys see me with with the businessman out there with those guys like boxing is like abundant out here mma is like a little harder to get by so <clears throat> Yeah, the that. training and everything's it's, it's, the same though. Like, I got me some mats and stuff. I'm in my room right now, so I just kind of be doing my own little, you know. <laughs> Dang, you ain't got the oh, setup. Yeah. I yeah, was like, I got my right here. My uh, I got my dumbbells right here for when I do my after my podcast. Yeah, yeah. and I got my shadow boxing <laughs> ones. I they only had pink when I bought them, but yeah, it works. So it gets the job done. Nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't argue with results. Right. Yeah. So I guess like leading up to the fights for me, like I'll do a mixture of just trying to lose a little bit of water weight, normal kind of weight loss stuff. And then my fight training on top of that, man. But I'm still I'm still just self-trained as of right now. So that's another beauty to it. We got to get you in a gym, bro. Man, that'd be nice, bro. I'm hoping that they come up with something like how Scarface has for some of his people, a gym like that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna that's take you up a notch. <laughs> yeah, that one because your defense, I really like it, especially with your opponents when they uh, I want to say lose control, but when they went on a flurry of attacks on you, you came in, you didn't just shell up, you pulled your defense in, and you would uh, I would like weather the storm, and then you waited, and as soon as the opportunity rose, you were able to strike. And I, yeah, I wouldn't have thought you were self trained. Dang, I like that. All right, yeah, yeah thank we you, gotta bro. get to the yeah. <laughs> yeah like i've definitely like grown up doing some things you know but uh a lot of it's self-trained bro and just either getting beat up or like you know just <laughs> coming out on top bro but i guess defense is definitely something i've been trying to focus on a lot more now like like you guys seen with the skinner fight and stuff and i've had previous fights my most recent boxing match with with that bruce guy like pressure fighters, those kinds of guys. Uh, I do tend to eventually, like, catch them. You know, I'll be doing my thing. But those, like, pressure fighters, I guess you could say, I've had had a little bit of struggle with. You know, that kind of goes to that question earlier about a strength and weakness for me is I would consider that a weakness for me, maybe, like, some pressure fighters or something. People like to get in my face. But, yeah, you just got to be careful, though. <laughs> That's it. How tall are you again? Yeah, my stats is uh, like 5'9", and then my fight weight is 145, so, yeah. That'd be long, bro. Yeah, you, you look a lot taller, longer on, on uh, video. No yeah. diddy. And then Apex, that Jaguar character that you see, that is... One of the older, yeah, the one on the screen is the new logo, and that was the older digitized logo. Yeah. 
And so that was oh, that the banner. Sick. If you watch the scrapyard videos, a lot of the videos of, for a while back had this banner in the background. When I was going to every event, because I spray painted the shipping container too, I would bring this, I'd hang it up, I'd do interviews, I did all sorts of stuff. And uh, I'm working on the new shipping container. I'm working on a drawing right now, and I'm going to put a new piece up. And since you guys are here, I can tell you I'm doing it in an entire comic book style. So I'm going to do a piece and then uh. completely cover it with the hard lines in black. And then that will slowly fill up all the spaces, and there'll just be hard black lines everywhere. So it just looks like one big comic book scene. Yeah. Dang, bro. That's nice. Can't wait to see, man. Yeah. So, yeah, when I get a few more things with Zwell together, you know, I'm going I'm to leave this weekend job, and then I'll be good to go again. Yeah. You know, Washington got expensive bills out here, you know. Whew. And, you know, you guys know as a fighter, you know. <laughs> yeah. Half the fight is oh, outside the ring. Exactly. Yeah, it so, really is. Go I ahead, buddy. I was going to ask. Oh, wait, sorry. What's up, Song Gay? No, I was just saying, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask Dennis the Menace because I know uh, Song K, I like how he said when he's when he's older, he could be able to teach your younger self some things. Do you find, think in the future, if there ever comes a point when you're unable to fight after professionally, you would try to coach? Yo. Oh, what's up? Let me. What's up, y'all? We got I'm all the way me. from Scrapyard. A yes, pillar in, in their branch, in their community, LB3 in the building. What's up, guys? What's up, buddy? Sam K, how you doing? Uh, Dennis the Menace, how you doing, bro? What's up, man? I'm good. I'm good. Right on. What's nice you? to meet you. All right, man. I'm blessed. It took me a minute to get on and figure this all out, man. Had to change passwords and all. I'm like, what's going on? Hey, oh, wow. yeah, I'm happy I figured out as quick as I did. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I've been watching. I've been listening on my phone, trying to trying to use my uh my laptop to get on. But we're here, so good thing. Hell yeah! Welcome, welcome. Thank you. So I'll just say, you want to answer a question real quick, Dennis Menace, before we hop to Lemby? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've I've considered like opening my own gym and stuff after that. Definitely, that'd be really fun. Yeah, I think that's really a, like a good uh, a good thing to look forward to, like sharing the knowledge and stuff like that. It'll only help you. So awesome, man! Mm -hmm. Damn, that's cool as shit. Hell yeah! <laughs> Well, MB, man, welcome in. Oh, man, I'm so happy to see. You. We got Pashoto in the house. We all don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's a perfect way to segue into this because speaking of coaching, Len B had a team Pashoto and you were a coach yourself. And I was going to say, you're not just coaching with uh, fighting, but I know you're also involved as a coach in other sports as well. You kind of want to talk about that? Yeah, you know, um, well, I've been coaching for uh, quite a while. Um, I actually coached football since 1996. So a lot of people don't really know that I'm a little older than what people think. But, you know, I've been coaching and, yeah, football's been my thing. I coach track, track and field, um, you know, kind of recently in the last few years, just going back, getting myself into uh, the scrapyard, um, you know, the first year really motivated me to get back into coaching or not back into coaching, but to co start coaching boxing because, uh, you know, uh, you know, just being a former, you know, athlete myself and then, and then boxing myself, uh, it really sparks something when you're in these yards, right. You know, you get around the fighters, even though you're, it's not something that you're intended to be doing. Um, you just get around that, the, you just get around the atmosphere and it just, it, it feels you, man. It, it really fires you up. And then that spark got into me. And um, then I just started. I said, hey, you know what? Got with my brother who brought me out to the scrapyard and uh, me and him talked. And uh, he said, you know what? You ought to start coaching this. You know, sometimes, you know, you if you're a good coach, you can coach just about anything as long as you apply yourself um, and, 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 and do your research. Right. Um, but I really coach from a different standpoint. I'm not a coach that that really likes to get too involved with trying to change what someone's doing. I'm always just trying to make what they're doing better. And so that's just kind of the way I go with my approach to coaching. And then also just trying to make sure that I 
Um, you know, I teach core values, you know, teaching people how to be better men or, you know, improve their character. And, and sometimes when you do that, tapping into, I'm always on the mental health stuff, but tapping into that and making them, uh, uh, helping someone be a better person, uh, usually will let them, uh, kind of allow them to be a better athlete. So yeah, that's kind of the way it goes, but yeah, but I've been coaching for a long time, man. It's awesome, man. I wanted to ask you, um, for the people who are watching who don't know, can you tell them what Peixoto is as well as uh, where the name came from? Because that's a very unique name. Yeah, yeah. Well, Peixoto, um, and Peixoto came, it, it's, it's my, it's a, it's a good friend of mine from high school, um, his great, his grandmother's last name. Um, him and his a cousin back in the 90s had a clothing brand called Butterbean, similar to the fighter but it was butter with an A, uh, butter being clothing line. And when their grandmother passed away, they decided to change the name from butter bean to Pichotto. Her, her, her name was Mary Louise Pichotto. It's a Portuguese last name. And from the history behind the name, they were the second family to come to the United States to get, um, citizenship, um, and so it's a pretty significant name. Um, so they got citizenship, citizenship under their name. That family came over from Portugal and they've been in the United States. And that's been since like the early, early 70s um, when that when that happened. And so that's Pichotto. Now, with the clothing line itself, Butterbean was really big on the West Coast. Uh, very, very competitive uh, with clothing lines like 26 Red, you know, some of the California brands uh cross colors and things like that but it originated from the east coast because when their family came from portugal they went from you know the 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 typical florida up to new york city where their families um be, you know resided and so uh fred stewart who is the president and founder of Pichotto clothing line uh, formerly known as butterbean clothing line he's from brooklyn and his his cousin uh boogie brow uh, is a is a music artist, a friend of mine from high school, who is also from New York. He's a he's from Queens, and so um, they brought that back here a couple years ago. We talked, and uh, at the time, I was helping artists, musical artists, managing them. And a friend of mine, that friend I was talking about from high school, Boogie Brow, asked me to manage him. And so COVID kind of hit, and we really couldn't get into the realm of of managing um, artists. And so I came to the scrapyard. We used the name uh, Pichotto to create Team Pichotto. Now, Team Pichotto was already developed because of the management team. So the management team behind the name called itself Team Pichotto. So when I got to the scrapyard, we just took that name and used it to create the team. Some of the first fighters that we had on our, on our team were, you know, um, Turco and the Turkish Assassin, Rashad Shrugs, Simo. Um, those were, I think, the first four. And then that grew legs. Jay Gotham came into the scene and he was like, bro, you know, I really want to get down with you guys. He's also an artist in the music industry. So I was able to kind of, he came to me and he's like, you know, I need a big bro mentor to really kind of help me with my album, my distribution, my promotions. And I knew a lot about that because that's stuff that I used to do back in the day. Um, and so I really kind of started diving in and helping him. And when he took the reins, because he asked me, he says, you know, I'd like to not only be um, part of the team, but I'd like to be an ambassador. And when he said he wanted to be an ambassador, I connected him with the president, Fred Stewart uh, and James Boogie Brow, who was the vice president. And they allowed him to be an ambassador. When he did that, he just went full fledged. And if anybody knows Jay got him when he did something, he did it to the fullest. Right. So he started recruiting fighters and the the, the image. What I started started off kind of a little bit on the positive side of things. And then it quickly turned into we're now the bad boys of the of the streetbeats. And uh, and that came out of the scrapyard. So he started selecting fighters that had a little bit of a chip on their shoulders, something to prove, uh, a mean attitude. Um, they didn't want to get in the ring to play around and just do it for sport. They wanted to really put you on your back 
and shake hands or no shake hands. You walk away from it, and that's what we do. We just get ready for the next fight. So that's kind of where the show started and kind of how it ended. I'm no longer uh, in, in in the business of helping Pichotto the clothing line anymore, um, but I still represent it as, as, as a sponsor to the scrapyard because as I'm grandfathered into the scrapyard as Pichotto, um, we still use the name to sponsor the scrapyard. But other than that, I don't really do anything anymore with scrapyard or with Pichotto itself. Um, I still rock some of the gear, some of the dope clothing line. So, um, and, and you know, to speak about Pichotto, the way it really blew up was in East, in, in the East Coast. Um, they were connected in the music industry over in New York, and they got artists to start wearing it. People like Nas, uh, AZ, Busta Rhymes, you know, DJ Envy in the Breakfast Club, Bill Bellamy, like all of these artists and these, these, these like big moguls in the industry were wearing the clothing line. So for me, three years ago or four years ago, I asked them to bring it to the West Coast and let me kind of become the face of it. And uh, for this fight, it, for the West Coast, and they did. And so Fred Stewart moved to Seattle, Washington. Um, we, we opened up some pop-ups that led to a storefront in Ballard where we had a, a shop and a store. And then things just blew up for them. And uh, I kind of stepped away and pulled away from it and just wanted to focus on one thing, which was the fighting side of it. Absolutely. Shit. I mean, that's a, uh, you got definitely got your hands. We got a big old plate. Hell yeah. No. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, being fighter, we always have a uh, full plate. So I was going to ask Dennis the Menace, do you have any hobbies outside of fighting out of curiosity? Oh, man. Yeah, I've I've definitely tried like other sports and stuff, but like I was only really successful in like cross country and swimming. So, bro, I really don't be doing too much outside of training, bro. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm like so focused, like so driven to this, and I mean outside of fighting, like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I've worked at a few, like, I've worked at a few gyms, I guess, and, um, like, I really just try and hang out with, uh, like, my, my, uh, I got a few brothers here who I hang out with, um, kind of just hang out, bro, play video games, man, <laughs> I guess. Hey, yeah, I, I haven't had a TV you. for a few years, though, but... <laughs> You know what? I noticed that you all three are fighters. And if I could give you any advice, Dennis, I like what you said when you said that you train. Um, I believe that as an athlete, you kind of have to minimize how much extracurricular or extra things you're putting into your life because things can become a, a distraction to your training. And so when I tell my fighters, you have to give it 100 percent all the time. And in order to be the best, sometimes you got to give yourself the best. And that means you got to train night and day. That means you have to spar when you can. You have to um, you have to eat right. You have to keep your mind clear. So sometimes doing all that extra stuff can distract you. Now, for me, because I'm not a fighter anymore, I um I can do that. Right. Um, but then it also balance. It's also like having children. Right. So I have a family. I have kids. And and I know maybe, you know, I don't know, Sam K or, or Dennis, if you guys have that. But I know Buddy V does. And sometimes we have to balance that. We can't have too many things on our plate or we will lose focus and be successful in our family life. So it's the same thing. You have to make sure that you're dedicated and focused on your training to be the best fighter that you can be. Yeah. I, I like that question, King Cowpo. Did you guys see that? What are uh, your thoughts on sex before a fight? And that's, Ooh, that's, that's what it's been. Let's go. Oh, yeah. I'm curious. Uh, who wants to go first? Well, we're kind of quiet, but I'll say uh, just as a coach, I, I I think it's different for, for some people um, because I think that if you're a person who has a, a kind of, I will say a high libido and you need to, you need to do that. Um, if you stop, it will, it'll throw you off track. If it's something that you do on the regular. So some people do it every day, maybe even a couple times a day. If you if you stop that, it will actually enable you. It's the same thing with like, no, really, it'll it'll hurt you. But then there's those guys that 
it does. There is a saying that doing it before a fight or doing it during training, it, it's like taking 20. It's like running a 20 mile, you know, run and it could take that much from you. Um, and you do got to look at certain things like, you know, your 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 testosterone levels. You have to look at how much iodine you're producing to the brain. You have to look at how, how are you stimulating your amino acids or how are you you know, there's so many different things and it does affect that. And so. Um, I would say that it's to each his own. It's kind of like, what's your normal regimen? If you do it on a regular, keep doing it. You know, if, if, if something that you're not used to doing and you do it before a fight, it's going to affect you. So mm. that's just my take. Yeah. Yeah. This science is important, but yeah, it's okay, bro. Let, let's hear it, bro. What you got? <laughs> oh, you just going to skip. You just going to skip, huh? <laughs> no, no, I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. I'm just, you know. I want to see. I want to see what uh, you got, man. For me, bro, I would say uh, for most people, I believe in most cases, you got to pause, man. You got to hit the pause button. You know, um, that's uh, that's that's literally energy, life force, strength. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, uh, the old timers would say that's your legs. You know what I mean? He ain't got no legs. You know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've noticed it even in myself before, you know, so, uh, can you still go out there and get the dub? Yeah. But will you be affected? Yes. You know, now granted there's, there's some who get the, the opposite, you know, I know, uh, they say for females, it's, com it's completely the opposite for females, you know, it's a boost. You know, but I would say for males, uh, it, yeah, it's it's a deduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, see, yeah, what would okay. you guys say, bro? If I if I, if I told you guys I had sex before, like my first two fights, bro, the night before, bro. Oh, <laughs> it happens. Day, it happens. I could dig yeah. it. Yeah, bro, I tried Rest. so hard. Like my last fight, like I'm single right now, and I don't have no kids or anything, uh, Len B. But yeah, I'm I'm actually the oldest of nine siblings, bro. So I got all my baby siblings to take care of. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I got a big family, bro. So I'll be taking care of them. <laughs> but like my last boxing match, I tried so hard. Like, bro, I'm not trying to get too, you know, TMI with you guys, but no, like, yeah, like a month, I'd say, or maybe two weeks. But, like, that I stopped, right? I was single or whatever. And every week I had at least one, like, you know, dream. So I didn't even get the effects, bro. I didn't even get the power up. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, Damn, really? <laughs> you know, they say, uh, they say actually what's good for you is uh, the act with, without the finish. They, they say now that that is a, a boost as well. You know, you can go ahead and do the do. Just don't finish it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you if you can do that, you know, because that takes a lot <laughs> of discipline and restraint, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you can do that, you know what I'm saying? You might yeah. get a, a little boost there. You it's, know, it's definitely a, it's definitely a workout. It could be right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I meant. See, I just, I never did booty the night before a fight, but like during camp or something, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'd be down. Uh, recently, out of the past, you know, the however many few months, six months, I've been reading into different things and whatnot. And one of them is, yeah, the whole retention and learning some of the sciences behind it about when you do, uh, you know, you lose some of the, the, the um, like, iron or vitamins in your body because obviously your body has to produce these things and if you practice the retention there are health benefits this and that and so mm -hmm. i kind of did a little experiment and uh on myself when i found myself practicing some retention here and there um the longer i'd go my my, my recovery would just be a little quicker all of a sudden I'm like wait what or my punches would be just a tad bit faster i could push myself just that little bit more and i'm like what the hell Whereas before, you know, I'm just like, if I went beat cheeks, went on a run, I'd be like, oh, about four miles, I'm not going to do wind sprints after this. I'm good. I'm go outside and shower. But I'm also 30 yeah. years old, so I don't know. <laughs> Bro, I think something we're all, like, agreeing on is there's, like, science behind it, you know, and something Sonke was talking about, the old school saying, you know, your legs <laughs> and stuff. 
bro, like buddy, what you just said, I feel like I'm a lot more durable whenever I'm not. You know, I'll tell you guys this though, and I think this is a, a statement. My my coach used to always tell me when I was boxing and when I started getting when I went into my pro at, pro debut, he used to always get on me and say, Bro, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I was the knucklehead kid that did it anyways. I never really felt the effect. Um, but I tell you, when you get older, you you either you either go up or you go down with it. And I, I kind of feel like that it, it kind of matters a little bit on how you take care of your body with or without it. Right. It's what you're eating, how you exercise, you know, all of those things to pl- come into play. Uh, are you taking multivitamins? Do you you know, do you do you detox and get all the bad stuff out of your system? Um, I never felt like it ever enabled me. Actually, it motivated me. Um, but that was just me. I was like, you know what, coach, whatever. I'm, I'm doing me. And I went into fights and I didn't feel like I lost a step. But I will tell you that the next morning I, I was always pretty dang burnt out. Right. So. Yeah, facts. Yeah, some menaces out here. He's he's beating ass, and then he's also getting cheeks too. Dang, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said that you uh, talked about how you went pro for a little bit too, but you also uh, fought in Golden Gloves, did you not? LB three. Yeah, actually, I started boxing. Um, I started boxing back in the day here in Seattle. There was a gym called Hillman City Boxing Club. And that was in Columbia City, middle, middle Seattle. I started that when I was about six years old, very young. I was playing youth football, kind of got into that and did both. My parents were really heavy into me, you know, being involved with something and not being out on the streets. But that was only because a lot of my family members were gang members. And so they didn't want me to follow that path. Now, even though I did follow it anyway, because. You know, you just get drawn into what your cousins are doing. But when I was in Hillman City, I trained from about six years old till about, I want to say, maybe maybe 12. And when I got to 12, then it started competing. Back in those days when we fought your gym, if you had a good coach, they wouldn't allow you to you couldn't even spar within the first year. You had to wait. And training was pretty, pretty. You know, it was about they would they would put into you what you were willing to put into your craft and so at 12 years old you 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 had to figure out am i going to be that little kid who's doing this for fun or am i doing this now because i want this to become something that i want to do for the rest of my life and so i hit about 12 years old and went from uh went from hillman city and dabbled back and forth to bumblebee boxing and bumblebee was also another um gym that was here in west in seattle and uh b coach b rest in peace was what i heard was one of the best coaches that was here in seattle so i started going there about 12 years old but my uncle he fought as a pro his name is milton rich and then i had a cousin named toby gibson and they both fought um back in the days we used to have uh fights in the kingdom so they would have the wwf go on and then they would have like the little midget wrestling and then right after that you'd have amateur and pro boxing so everything was done on one event. And so I used to go watch my uncle and them. And then I just figured, you know what? I seen all the crowd. I seen all the fame. I've always been kind of a hype type of person. So I was like, you know what? I want to do that. So from about 12 to about 16, I really, really laid into it. I mean, we were running from we were running, you know, 12 years old. I'm running 10 miles to the lake and back and didn't really understand the concept. But also coaching was different back then. They broke you like you had to you had to withstand a certain level of pain to be considered somebody that was going to get to the next level. And so, you know, they they didn't have no problem using the word, you know, oh, you're a sissy or you're a punk or you're this and that. And those were your coaches. Right. Telling you this. And man, you you really had to withstand. We were also always put up against somebody bigger than us. That was just the nature of boxing. If you can accomplish and, and, and these two, these two minute, three rounds and these the, that never happened for us. Like we used to fight literally like I met a coach this recently that was talking about some of the things that we used to do. And, you know, like I'm at Benavides boxing gym now and I go there 
so often. You're talking seven, you know, seven, seven minute rounds or 12. You're, I mean, you're talking staying in the ring for quite a long time. Um, back then it was the same way. I mean, you did, you did, you know, if you could, if you could, 16 years old, the goal for me was getting 600 push-ups a day. So they used to call them a 600 pack. And we used to do push-ups like nonstop. So natural workouts were also such a big thing back in the day. If, if you notice, a lot of the older fighters used to do that. Pull-ups, push-ups, back dips. Um, and we would use chairs. We wouldn't use natural weights. It was just something that we didn't do. Now, a little bit of bench pressing was there, but nah, it wasn't that. I mean, you've seen dudes lifting dudes, right? So I'd be in the, I used to be in the gym at 16 years hey. old. I up like <laughs> two, yeah, I was putting up 200-pound, 200 220-pound men who were laying on, on my arms. And you just you just had to withstand that, man. And, and co coaches were just really tough. You didn't, you didn't go train like, I've been to these gyms where you go and you train for like 45 minutes and then you can play around and you're done. Back then you were in a gym for like two or three hours, bro. And you weren't leaving. You just weren't. And if you tapped out, you were coming back to the gym and everybody was treating you like you was that punk. Like you, hey man, you tapped out. You ain't supposed to tap out. And so, you know, it's a little bit different these days. I think it's, it's a different caliber of toughness. Not saying that guys aren't tough. But they're getting it a little too easy these days. Back then, it was really difficult, man. I mean, you, we, we, I mean, it's just how it was. And you, if you got left behind on a run, you was by yourself. Nowadays, they're like, oh, you gotta, you gotta wait for the guy behind you and have somebody motivate him and push him and all that. And it's like, what? Nah, bro, if you got left on a 10 mile run, you better get back by yourself the best way you can and as fast as you can. Um, what Lindy's saying is you're soft. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way there's a lot of soft guys out here. You know, I'm not saying there. this is a different type of soft. Soft. Let's just put it that way. It's a different type of strength and different things that they're doing today. Now, I'm not saying all the machines and stuff don't work because they do. Um, and I'm not saying that today's coaching doesn't work because it does. It's different strokes for different folks. But it was so different back then, man. I'm telling you, it was so hard. I mean, you 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 talk about shadow boxing now. Like I watch guys shadow box at a at a gym and it's like five minutes. But those minutes are broken down and you get breaks in between. Well, now back then we didn't do that. No, you you shadow box and you keep going until your coach tells you that you can stop. There was no time. It was like you're gonna box until I tell you to stop. You're gonna shadow box until until I feel like you're tired. You know, your arms would be like you couldn't even move them no more. Your shoulders would be dead. And you, that's just how it was, man. Um, but 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 you know what? It's a whole different breed. And now for me, I went into uh, to go back to it. But I went into I got to 16 years old and I'm like, yeah, I want to do the Junior Olympics. I want to get into Golden Gloves. I want to see what it's really about. So about 16, 17, I started going into that venture training with TBC Tacoma Boxing Club. Um, I would go to different gyms and just my coach would take me to different gyms. Also, back then, you would train with different coaches. They weren't stingy like today. Coaches are like, oh, you can't go train with that coach. You can't go because they're worried about them stealing you or they're worried about them changing your technique. But back then, your coaches took you to different gyms so that you could get that different, you know, element so that you could be a little bit more real, uh, a little bit more rounded, you know. Um, so I would go to TBC Tacoma Boxing Club. I would be at Azteca Boxing Club when I got a little bit older. Um, I just jumped from gym to gym and, and you know, it's just the way it was. You know, I get different stuff from different coaches. And so about 1997, um, I graduated high school in 1995. And so in 1996 and 1997, I was like, what am I going to do? Am I ready to do this pro thing? And I was like, yeah. So, you know, also back then you didn't you didn't do a whole bunch of amateur fighting. Um they was like, train, 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 train. And when you're ready to be pro, we're going to let you know. And so we trained, we trained, we sparred within our gyms. Uh, we cross sparred with each other. We cross trained with different gyms. And then when your coach came and told you that you were ready for the pros, you better get ready. And so when TBC came, I uh, went to TBC Tacoma Boxing Club. Uh, my coach B was like, you know, I'm ready for you to go. I'm ready for you to do this. So I entered in the Golden Gloves, uh, got the Golden Gloves in 1997, 1998. 
fought Golden Gloves again in 90 in 99. I didn't win Golden Gloves in 99. I kept training and fighting. Then I went to title round one world championships in 2004 and uh, got the belt. And so that was my that was my career. Um, my best of my career. I kept fighting after that. But then I just I got too old. And and that's the thing about today's fighters is having too many amateur fights. You get old fast. Your body wears fast. So do you want to in Benavides? We talk about this all the time. Coach Coach um, uh, Jose, he always tells David and the rest of those guys, all the young people, he says, you know, would you rather be 16-0 as an amateur or 16-0 as a pro? And I would much rather be 16-0 as a pro. And if you're 16-0 as an amateur, you're taking a lot of beating. Your body's wearing down on you faster. Um, you're not reserving for the pros. Actually, you have a shorter career um, fighting too many amateur fights. And so um, I believe in that. And so that's kind of where it was. I got older, started coaching um, in the gym all the time, being around my coaches. Loved it. Um, yeah. So I got back to the younger guys, always coach the youth. So I got older and I coached the, the little kids, those eight, nine year old kids. And it kind of grew from there. And yeah. And then I got back into it the last three years. I stopped doing it for maybe, man, maybe eight years or so I stopped and then got back into it once Scrapyard came back around. So and I still dabble a little bit. I still train a lot. You know, um, my core is not as great as it used to be, but. You know, I am hitting the weights. I've gotten a little bit bigger. I went from 170 to about 190 right now. Um, but hit that, you know, that's just muscle, a little bit of dad belly, you know. But other than that, man, I'm I'm just training and I'm planning to hopefully fight um at our at our anniversary event. So nice, nice. What? Let's go. That'll be your first street piece fight. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I I've, I've I've done some, I've done some, I've done some some sparring in there and banged a couple of people around and then it that kind of when you have a certain skill set and you guys probably all know this when you fight when you spar with guys that don't have the same skill set it it will everybody in the yard looks at you and they're like oh i don't want to fight him now i don't want to fight him now so i get that so much uh you know like you know i talked to a few guys you want to fight and they're like no i won't fight they're afraid that they think i'm better than what i am and i'm like dude i'm not that good no more you get that. It's like riding a bike. It comes back, but you're going to get banged around. Um, the only thing I have to be careful now is I just had nose surgery uh, a month ago. So I, my septum was deviated from boxing. I, I never got it fixed. So I recently got it fixed. I don't want it to get messed up again. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Be like, oh, man, I got to do it again. <laughs> but that's why, that's why they say the best boxing is not getting hit, right? It's a good defense. So hopefully yeah. I just... I don't get hit, you right? <laughs> yep, yep. So. I wanted to ask you, man. Uh, transitioning into uh, the boxing, the uh, boxing coaching. Um, what are some tips, some key tips that you could give uh, some of the fighters who are up and coming? I I tell guys this right now, all the time. Stick to the basics. There's only three points to the basics. You have to make sure that you have a good defense. You have to make sure you have good footwork and you have to work off the jab. If you don't have a good jab, go back to the beginning and work the jab. It's, it's, it's something that the jab sets everything up and you have to know how to use the jab, too. That's another thing. You can't just pop the jab out there. A lot of people are like, oh, I could pop the jab. But when we grew up, I grew up, it was snap the jab. So we used to use it. We used to throw from the shoulders and it's not it's, it's called developing twitch movement. And so if you have a good twitch movement, then your, your jab is snapped there. Now, a lot of people use the jab for a range finder. A lot of people use the jab to kind of set people up and kind of, you know, use it for defense, um, you know, to different strokes. But find your jab. Be good at your jab. Make sure that you're keeping your head movement. Stay off the center line. Um, and then everything else kind of flows. Don't jump into doing. I always tell guys too, don't jump into doing combinations too fast. Because if you throw a bunch of combinations, you're not throwing them right. There's a lot of things that are technical. Start with the basics and make sure you do the small things correct. The small things are so important. And that doesn't matter what sport you're in. I always say one of my sayings in my football is that when I coach football is that the way we do small things are the way we do all things. 
And so if you don't put your foot in the right place and you don't have your head in the right spot or you don't have your body turned the way you should have it turned or you're not pivoting off the back foot, you're not using your hips. Every little piece of detail is should be a progression. And you start with the basics and you slowly progress. And as you progress, you're allowing yourself to grow, have the muscle memory. And now your body is trained to do what the mind wants it to do. And that's just the way that's kind of the best way that I can tell people um, from boxing to coaching, because everything that I didn't do when I was a boxer. Right. I tell people to do now as a coach. <laughs> yeah. I can see the errors. Dude. That's yeah. what a good coach does. They see. Yeah. They see yeah. the youth and the errors. Yeah. And then, you know what? Like with Benavides right now, I do. I'm a scouting agent for them. And so what I do is. I look for talent that could fit into the high level elite pro situation. I don't just find young kids or these teenagers that are just trying to do it for fun or exercise. I'm that guy that goes around and says, hey, you're going to be a great pro. I see that you got an ability. So what we want to do is everybody's different. You know, I mean, all four of us are going to have a different fighting style. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's really like taking seeing what you can do. And again, making it better for you um, because your strength is going to be a weakness to someone else if you use it the right way. Yeah. I bet. So I have to be the bearer of bad news. I was going to say some, okay? I was going to ask if you had any final questions for either of our guests because I know we got to kind of wrap this show up here soon, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Nah, man, uh, it's, it's uh, about that time whenever, uh, you know, we ask our guests to go ahead and, you know, any shout outs or plug ins you guys want to go ahead and do, uh, you know, now the time. Know. I'm sorry. I always hate being the bad guy. I'm like, oh, hey, you know, what we do. We do. Yeah. We do the scrap talk podcast on Tuesdays <laughs> and I'm like the bad guy now. So <laughs> I get oh, okay. it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, I'll start off because I do got to get going too, just like you know everybody else. But uh, uh, since I just thought about it, shout out to a uh, heart and a fight who uh, does bring us on to do uh, scrap talk. We air every other Tuesday, six p.m. Um, so appreciate them uh, for allowing us to come on. I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm doing great things, but being doing podcast, I've I've never really done that before. Uh, shout out to Pichotto Clothing Brand. Uh, the guys that allow me to sponsor the scrapyard, shout out to the scrapyard, fire chicken, all the fighters. Somebody said they want to see me and Viking warrior shout out to my team. Um, those are my guys, uh, spar them. Yeah. But fight him. No. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, shout out to all those guys. And then shout out to Benavides boxing, uh, coach Jose junior, Jose, uh, I mean, coach Jose senior, Jose junior, David Benavides has a fight coming up. He's taking a fight in the U with a UK fighter. Um, man, things are going good. And uh, shout out to my family, my wife, my kids, my Cleveland high school football chief self track team. And uh, shout out to MMA underground Yankee and the Brit. Appreciate you guys. Zuel, you know, man, everything, you know, I appreciate you guys so much though. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Lynn. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, you Dennis the Mitten? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's do it, bro. Yeah, obviously, you know, House of Hands, bro. My team and everybody, you know, that's a part of that. Uh, I actually got a sponsor, too, man. Yo, you guys need to check them out. Wolflow, that's my sponsor. That's who made the team shirts and stuff. Um, you know, shout out to my brother, Kevin, uh, the guy who started the team with me. You know, my mom and stuff like that. My family, you know, everyone who supports me. And everyone who, uh, you know, tries to take care of me, you know, it's a lot where we go through uh, in and out the cage, man. So shout out to MMA Underground. Thank you guys for having me on here. I've been watching the lives and stuff, man. This is a great show. So I'm thankful to be a part of it. Oh, it's been a pleasure having boys, you on, man. Boys, man. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely, man. We appreciate you and your time, bro. Yeah. And all the other branches, too. I'm trying to get us all, like, I think that's a big thing we all need to start doing, you know, showing everybody love, man. Yeah. <laughs> right? Hell yeah. That's why we do this, bro. You know? Yeah. I appreciate you guys, for real. Well, you have a fun night. Thank you so much. Oh, shit. 
Oh, Brett, man. <gasps> Another prior much. show, man. That's how it goes. Tuesdays are the best days. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you guys know that we're not quite finished yet with the show, but you got to give us at least just two seconds. Two seconds. It's it's funny, you know, like I wouldn't even say we're we're influenced by by '90s music as much as I would just say we're influenced by good music. Um, you know, it, it, I think we're very genre um, uh, diverse. You know, like we're we're not really fixated on on one particular era or um, or genre of music. I think we just kind of uh, and and you know it shows in our music too that we kind of take the elements of whatever that we we do enjoy and, and try to put it together some way or another. Um, and and I think that's true so, for all of our. Musically, would you call yourself polyjamorous? Polyjamorous. <laughs> I like that. Oh, that's 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 unique. I haven't heard that one. We're gonna we're gonna start using that Jay, on our on all our like Listen, you know files if, and stuff if, like that. If I was y'all, not trying to be funny, I would probably make that a name of a song or that's album. Good. That's good. I like that. It's kind of like a, a cool idea. If, if, album if, and every song is a different genre. If, I'm in our bio right now. I have my moment. What's up, everybody? It's Jay from Yankee and the Brit bringing you some exciting news. King Palms and Yankee and the Brit are teaming up together to give you an amazing deal. Head over to kingpalm.com, use promo code KPYNB to save 20% off your entire order. That's right, 20% off your entire order just by using the promo code KPYNB. If you want to enhance your smoking experience, King Palms has you covered. Innovative designs, premium quality, and they're all natural. So make sure you go over to kingpalm.com and use the promo code KPYNB at checkout to save 20% off your entire order. Buddy V's Fighters to Watch. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, we always start off at the scrap yard. And right now we have the Rim Reaper. Now, this was a fun one because it was somebody who so had to go. But both men were coming with a losing record. Now, you could see Rim Reaper was putting in some work. He shouted out his gym that he's been training at, this and that. And it showed this man came with a mission. I do not believe this is the same Rim Reaper from the first fight. This new one, I was like, holy crap. So after watching it, I had to put him on the list. I mean, this fight was great. So if you guys have a check, a second, go check it out. Street Beast Scrapyard, Rim Reaper. Now, Street Beast West Coast. Let me look. <laughs> hold on. Adelfos. I don't know if I said it right or wrong. You so said it right. Was crazy. So I, I was watching. What? You said it right. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching the fight. This was a crazy one as well. These men are going at it. And it was a good back and forth. And unfortunately, there's an incident that happened that drew into a no contest. This was one of the gentlemen in the fight. Now you can look up the name. You know you can look for a fight. And you know you have to go watch it now to see what I'm talking about. Because I'm not going to tell you anything more. I'm just going to tell you to go look at this man and go look at this fight. Because he's a fighter to watch. <laughs> Third one from the OG yard, Swanson. Oh my goodness! If you have seen uh, the movie Creed Two, when uh, like when his son comes out, it looks just like his son. I was like, wait, what? This, and then he did not disappoint. He put a beating on this man. His opponent, I mean, this guy was clean. The way he kicked, the way he punched, he just had this mean look to him. I was like, okay. So definitely, I want to see more. I typed his name. I only saw, I don't think I found another fight. So please, Swanson, let me get another one. Holy shit, dude. Uh, last, haha, -ha, Dirty South, we have uh, Dennis the Menace. Because we talked about how we had some fights just coming out. And, you know, Dirty South only produces them every so often. So you have a handful of hidden gems to go check out. And he's in another promotion. He gave you the shout out and the link. So you can make sure to go see. He's a good fighter, and I mean, you heard it on the show. He got a fracture on his bone because he kicked someone so damn hard, and he's still out here. He made sure he healed up, and he's back fighting. I mean, that's a warrior, so make sure you watch all his fights. So those are my four fighters to watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those are some great picks, man. Great picks as always. Dare I say, fire picks.
Yeah, Sound Can the Fire Five. Let's go. We're going to start things off first and foremost. Street Beef's OG Yard. We have a fight between Red Bear and G Dub. Uh, this is an MMA match. Uh, this is a fire match. Uh, these guys were very scrappy. Um, we saw a, a mix of strikes and grappling throughout this match. Um, this was one of those uh, matches where it's youth versus ex experience. And um, both of these guys came ready. Both of these guys were tough. Uh, you know, we had uh, a lot of great effort shown by both men. But in the end, we had a nasty cut. Nasty cut at the end of the fight. And uh, check this fight out. You guys will see what happens. Um, this is a firefight. Street beefs. OG yard. Red Bear versus G-Dub. Yeah, moving on. Street Beef Scrapyard. You see it. If you're trying to look this fight up, that's the title right there. Uh, this is a fight between Batman Smooth and Busta Nutting. Man, this was a great boxing match. Styles makes fights. And uh, both of these guys came in with their own styles. And uh, it made for a great fight. Um, <laughs> we had a superhero and, uh, it was very super entertaining. Um, both of these guys had power. Um, both of these guys, uh, threw a lot of punches. Uh, we got a lot of, uh, great moments in this fight. Very entertaining. Uh, a lot of sportsmanship between these two and, um, it made for a great fight. Street beef scrapyard, Batman smooth versus Busta nutting firefight. Yeah, this was the fight that uh, Buddy V was just talking about. You see the title right there. If you're trying to look this fight up, it is in Street Beef's West Coast. This is a fight between Soldier of God and Adolfos. Uh, this was an MMA match. And um, you see the timestamp. These two didn't waste any time. They got straight to it. Um, we saw a mix of uh, some serious strikes as well as uh, a mix of grappling and wrestling in there. And um, these guys, they brought the pain. And um, as you see with the title on the screen, um, we got a shocking ending. Uh, check this fight out. Comment your thoughts. Street Beef's West Coast, Soldier of God versus Adolfo's Firefight. Moving back to Street Beef's OG Yard. This is a fight between Randy Rambo and Shadow. Uh, this is another MMA match. And uh, this is a, a, another matchup between a striker versus a grappler. And um, we got to see some great skills on display. Um, first and foremost, these guys had a lot of heart. Uh, they showed that. And um, yeah, man, these guys were fighting for dominance. Um, we saw adjustments being made. We saw a lot of great takedowns, strong kicks, and uh, both of these guys looking to uh, take the momentum. Um, in the end, we got a serious, serious uh, injury. And, uh, you know, ultimately, it's about safety first. Check this fight out. Street Beef's OG Yard, Randy Rambo versus Shadow. Firefight. And... The last firefight of the night, back to Street Beef Scrapyard. You see the title. This is a fight between Big Kid and American Dragon. Uh, once again, the timestamp, three minutes, 13 seconds. These guys didn't waste any, any time at all. Uh, big shots being thrown uh, from the very start. Um, but as we know, every episode, cardio is key. Not only is cardio key, but composure is key. And um, in the end, uh, with great timing, we got a great finish. Street Beef Scrapyard, Big Kid versus American Dragon. Sam Can the Fire Five. Oh, yeah. Ooh, 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 straight fire. I must live my blunt with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Great night, bro. Great night. Great show. But uh, what do you say? Is it about that time? Yeah, definitely about that time, man. We went a little bit over this time, but uh, I think it was worth it. And uh, ultimately, it made for a great show. 
Um, I want to give a shout out to uh, our guest tonight, uh, LB3. We appreciate you, brother. Um, Dennis the Menace, we appreciate you, brother. Uh, you guys out there watching, uh, like and subscribe uh, if you haven't already. And uh, go check out these guys, man. Um, Lim B is in uh, the scrapyard. You see him in the videos all the time. He's a pillar in their branch. And uh, Dennis the Menace is in uh, Street Beast Dirty South. He's got several fights out. Great fighter. Great people. Um, I want to thank the people in the comment section, the people watching us live, the people watching us on playback. Uh, we appreciate you all. Uh, Street Beast OG Yard, Street Beast Scrap Yard, Street Beast West Coast, Street Beast Dirty South. We appreciate you all. We do this for you all. Um, Buddy V, greatest co-host. Jay. Greatest producer, appreciate you too. Um, heart in the fight, as always, we, we appreciate you. Overtime Hustler Magazine, as always, we appreciate you. Zwellworld.com, as always, we appreciate you. Um, you guys are trying to catch me. I'm here every Tuesday, same time, same place. And uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much it for me. Hell yeah. Zwellworld.com, you know what it is. Go support, yeah, 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 yeah. some love, yeah. hard work, great determination. Hoo, hoo, hoo. You see the logo, you know what it is. And you know, you always have a fun time here. <clears throat> and you know, the Y and B, and you get a discount code at the store. So you know, you use that. You can use PayPal if you want to make payments, you can use credit cards, you can use all sorts of everything. I fully accept it. And not to mention, when I see your name on there and you make the payment, especially if you say you don't use that code, I'm going to know to have to toss something extra in there. <laughs> Other than that, you know, you have this well underscore buddy V Instagram, super fun, always good with stories. I've uh, been busy the past two, three days, but yeah, heck yeah, I haven't been missing too much. It's been a lot of fun just posting, uh, yeah, a little bit of here and there. You always get to see the in and outs as well. It's too much at good times. And I was going to say, Thank you, Samke. Thank you, Jay. We both make it possible for me to have an awesome time every single Tuesday. So, hell yeah. MMA Underground. And before we end it, you know we always have to use Jay's famous words. One world, one love, deuces. Happy, 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 happy.